Friends of former President Barack Obama are getting a little nervous over the possibility that President Joe Biden might not beat Donald Trump in November and are urging him to do something to shore up the left. So let's start up with former Attorney General Eric Holder. Now, Eric Holder is a close friend of Obama who told USA Today on Monday that if Trump were to win, there would be incalculable damage done to the country if Trump gets into the White House again. So uh, he's absolutely right on that. Uh, now, asked if President Obama shares that view, Holder replied, absolutely. I don't think it's a question about that. I think that's what motivates him. I think that's what will continue to motivate him. Well, not wrong. Uh, now, Michelle Obama also revealed that she is terrified about the possibility of a Trump presidency, a second one. And look, if you follow the things that Donald Trump has been saying, think that he'll be a dictator on day one, but, but just for one day, just, just the first day. Oh, really? Uh, I mean, dictatorship is a lot like uh, kind of Pringles, right? Once you pop, you can't stop. Once you go dictator, you can go back. As I said before, though, if you follow the polls, you can see why Obama is concerned. While Michelle Obama is terrified, Trump is leading Biden in a lot of the polling. And you can say, look, this is early. And he would be right. I mean, we don't have a, we're not done with the primary yet. Uh, and there's still a lot of time to go. But still, a lot of these early polls are really disturbing. For example, a January 3rd USA Today Suffolk poll, which shows Biden narrowly trailing Trump 39 to 37 with 17% supporting an unnamed third party candidate. So now, of course, you can point to that and say, okay, but the third party candidate, we're not quite done with the primaries and eventually it will coalesce and, and Biden will prevail. But we don't necessarily know that. And, and that's the concern. It's, it's too close for comfort. Other Democrats have sounded the alarm. They're saying the same thing and saying, what we need to do, what Joe Biden needs to do is to ramp up his outreach to progressives and independents to make sure that they don't lose him. Because if you have 17% looking at third parties, I mean, that is potentially disastrous. In fact, here is uh, Anton Gunn, a South Carolina Democrat who worked on Obama's 2008 campaign and is a protege to Jim Clyburn who said, I'm convinced more than ever that we have to save the American democracy through our actions and that we cannot allow Trump to be dictator for one minute, much less one day, one week, and give him four years. David Axelrod has suggested that Biden drop out. Just gone. Gone. <laughs> I mean, like... Bing, 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 she... It's gone. Gone. He's gone. Right? Uh, look, here's the thing, though. I actually agree with that. Uh, I know. I, look, I, Joe Biden did, did what he set out to do. He beat Trump in 2020, and I'm grateful for that. He did some good things during his presidency. He left Afghanistan. He put a cap on the price of insulin. Good things. But I think now it's time for him to make room for a progressive challenger, to lead the party, and to crush Trumpism once and for all. I just don't think he's the man to be able to do that. Now, is that going to happen? Well, that's the question, right? And it might come down to Barack Obama. Now, right now, according to sources close to the former president who spoke with USA Today, the former president is being tasked, to, to, tasked with coming to his former vice president's rescue. As polling shows, Biden struggling with black, Hispanic, and young voters. These are voters under 35. Those people are essential to any Democratic victory. Who do you think led the Democrats to victories all over the country during the midterms? Young voters, minority voters. African-Americans are the backbone of the Democratic Party. And Biden has lost a lot of ground. I think at this point, once again, uh, trying to reach out to these groups is going to be real tough for Biden. Look, you have a lot of younger people, a lot of minorities that are very appalled with Biden's unwavering support of Benjamin Netanyahu and the right wing government of Israel's indiscriminate bombing and ethnic cleansing campaign that's happening in the Gaza Strip. 
All right, you have tens of thousands of people that were killed, half of them, nearly half of them children. The death toll, toll is so incredibly disproportionate to what happened on October 7th, which by the way, nobody's discounting what happened on October 7th as being horrible. Of course it was. Absolutely. Now the IDF though, and the right-wing government of Israel took what was a tragedy and is turning it into a genocide. That's horrifying. Members of the government had openly talked about forcibly relocating Palestinians out of Gaza into one, into one of the neighboring countries in the region. That is ethnic cleansing. And here you have Joe Biden steadfastly supporting the Israeli government in doing this. That's a non-starter for a lot of people. Even people inside the administration, former White House officials, former, or, and, and of course, anonymous congressional aides, they've been putting out open letters saying, please, we need to be doing something to actually try to get a ceasefire in place, all right? A permanent ceasefire so that the death and the killing can stop. They've also said in these letters that they're, uh, you know, that, that they have been ignored. Their constituents have been ignored. Their phones are ringing off the hook. And, and, and they can't say anything. You have some of those staffers who've had family that have been killed in Gaza. It's just a horrifying situation. And so you have a lot of, one of these reasons is where a lot of progressives are saying, I cannot support this president anymore. I can't do it. That's really bad. That's really disturbing. And, it, and this is something that the Democratic Party is choosing to ignore, and, and, and they're doing it at their peril, okay? Now, that said, you have, uh, unfortunately, many Obama alumni, such as por pollster uh, Cornell Belcher, uh, Belcher sorry, and campaign manager Jim Messina, speaking with USA Today to try to downplay this. Right? They're going all over media, friendly media, and saying, oh, don't worry about that. They'll be fine. Everyone will come around. You know why? Because the, the Trump bad. Well, yeah, of course Trump bad. Yes, orange man bad. We know. We know that he will be the end of democracy in this country. This is a very serious issue. But again, at the same time, remember, they used that same message in 2016. And guess what? Trump still became president. D don't mess with this, okay? If this uh, election is important as we say it is, and it is, then don't mess around with this. Get someone who's going to win. Please ignore it at all of our peril. Or I should say, don't ignore it. Look, even Representative Jim Clyburn, who was instrumental in getting Biden to be the nominee in 2020, was very concerned about the president's support. Again, Clyburn made sure that Biden was the nominee that he would win Super Tuesday, that Bernie Sanders would not become the nominee. Let's not forget about that, okay? Now, Gunn also said that Biden, uh, the Biden campaign is not engaging voters, particularly African-Americans, on the urgency of 2024. Quote, what keeps me up is that if we only make the rational, thoughtful, and deliberate argument of why Biden is better, and don't recognize that there needs to be an emotional current through the campaign. Okay, now here's the thing. Biden wasn't everybody's first choice in the primary. It wasn't mine. Voted for him in the, you know, in, in, the, in the general election, but I did not vote for him in the primary. And I think a lot of people can say the same thing. A lot of progressives, right? Uh, but now that said, Obama called in some favors. He convinced others to drop out before Super Tuesday. And of course, you had Clyburn's support uh, in South Carolina, very important primary, early primary state. That's what Put him ahead of Bernie Sanders. Now it's kind of interesting how Clyburn is a guy who's concerned about Biden. And by the way, he should be because I think a lot of us are concerned. There's a lack of enthusiasm here. According to that same earlier Suffolk poll, 18% of primary voters said that they were very enthusiastic when asked to rate their excitement about Joe Biden on a scale from 1 to 10. They're not really excited to go out and vote for him. That's not a good thing. Look, I'm not excited about it, but I'll do what I have to do, of course. If Joe Biden ends up still running and, and winning the primary, yeah, I'll do what I have to do. I'll, I'll vote for him. 
Uh, but I think I speak for a lot of people when they say, I want a choice, a better choice. I don't want another Biden versus Trump. I'm not looking for it. And I'm not sold on the idea that he can carry a win a second time. Maybe I'm just being too much of a pessimist. But I, I think our democracy is too important to leave this up to chance. That said, if it comes down to it, I hope I'm proven wrong. Please prove me wrong. In situations like this, I would rather be wrong. I'll take the L, gladly, if I'm freaking out over nothing, right? I just think that this, the stakes are too high. I, I think that we cannot afford to fail. I think we can't afford to give Donald Trump four more years. Look, as the director of Suffolk's Political Research Center said this, Quote, the bet for Biden right now is once we get to this, uh, when we get this to a binary choice, one-on-one, -on -one, people will not vote for Trump. And that's a big gamble because that assumes that all the other third party candidates will go away or their support will dissipate. I don't like that. I don't think there's a guarantee that this will happen, that they will, you know, like win that bet. In addition he also said that more progressive-leaning voters have expressed being fed up with the staleness of the choices that are being offered. Yeah. Again, this is concerning. And maybe I am being premature, pessimistic, but I just feel like with democracy on the line, we can't be too careful. And if that means getting Biden out of the race, replacing him with someone else, who we know can win uh, against Donald Trump, then that's what we're going to have to do.